Shotguns have always been one of my favorite weapon types whenever I'm playing through any of the Fallout games. For Fallout 3, you have the Combat Shotgun, for Fallout New Vegas, you've got the Riot Shotgun or the Hunting Shotgun, and then for Fallout 4, you've got pretty much just the Combat Shotgun. So today, I'm going to use a shotgun that I've never really spent any time with. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only a single shotgun? Starting out, I named my character Sunny Frowns, as well as designed her to look like Sunny Smiles, which is pretty much the basic vanilla female character. For special, I went with the typical guns crit build, since shotguns are great with perks in New Vegas, like Shotgun Surgeon. For my tag skills, I went with guns, medicine, and repair, as well as skilled and trigger discipline for my traits. I also picked up Wild Wasteland, as I normally do, and bought some stim packs from Doc Mitchell. Got Russian flashbanged, as usual, when walking out into Good Springs, and had to close about 14 DLC pop-ups, because of course I did. I stopped by Chet to barter and see if he was selling a single shotgun, which of course he was not, so I spent some time here resetting to see if one would pop into his inventory since they're usually available at a very low level. He did not end up selling one, but that's not a big deal. I happen to know that there's a single shotgun in Good Springs that you can get through a less than legal way by just walking in someone's house and stealing it. I'm pretty sure it's Trudy's house, so after acquiring the weapon for my run, I went off and killed my doppelganger in the saloon. Yeah, well, it didn't go so great to start with, but I just put the gun away and everyone was friendly with me again until I killed the puppy. After that, I just, you know, started slaughtering everyone because I needed to see how the single shotgun was. I've never actually really used this weapon, but apparently it has the highest per shot damage out of all the shotguns. The obvious downside coming from its name, which is obviously the single shotgun, as it can only hold one shotgun shell per reload. After that, I went ahead and offed Trudy because she tried to domestically abuse me and fist me in a corner, which I was not very comfortable with. Also, to make sure that there was no witnesses, I went back and killed Joe Cobb, which I somehow missed a point-blank shotgun shell in his head. Not entirely sure how that went. I almost died as well because I didn't want to waste any healing items. Outside in Good Springs, I killed my other doppelganger as well as her puppy. Of course, I turned right around and found another puppy that I could domestically abuse with a shotgun shell and went off towards Hidden Valley. I found some powder gangers on the way. The weird thing was one of them had a helmet on and he died in one headshot with a shotgun. The other one, with no helmet, did not. Still trying to mentally process that, but I discovered Hidden Valley and decided I was going to hang out here for a little while. I ran around killing some of the absolutely adorable bark scorpions because I wanted their experience points. It saddens me because I actually like the bark scorpions. I decided to see if the Brotherhood was here early, which they were not. I've never actually checked to see if the Brotherhood can be accessed early before any of the main quest lines or before getting Veronica, so that was kind of an interesting little tidbit. Did not go through Black Mountain for once, and instead I wrapped around towards Quarry Junction where I decided to see what health a Deathclaw had. I also stopped by Repcon to murder a couple robots, as well as his brother who was a witness. After I'd gotten done murdering the robots, I decided to stop in the train station that's right next to Repcon and kill some fiends inside for a few little tidbits of experience early on, as well as whatever loot they had on them so that I could sell it to the gunrunners once I'd arrived there. One of the fiends almost made it out of the building running away from me and I debated switching to the double barrel shotgun that I found, but nope, I have to use the single shotgun this run. I already committed to it. Uh, I really don't like this gun already. I did some resetting at the gunrunners and Malcolm Holmes of course interrupted me as he always does, so I made sure that he knew that he was not welcome to talk to me, and headed off to do my usual things in Freeside, which consisted of giving my character a fucking seizure while trying to use Vats against Pacer. I don't know why I'm deciding to just make killing the kings a staple of runs now, but I guess, you know, easy experience. I also Vats Rex and shot him in the head, and when he died he did a cool little backflip, so, you know, I'll take it. Outside, I spent more time dealing with the kings, which was kind of annoying since my body was crippled, so I got stunned constantly, and I took a lot more damage out there than I was used to. I made sure to boop old Ben on my way into the strip, and I immediately ran straight for Gamora for some reason. I think I was gonna side with Mr. House at this point. I hadn't really picked a faction yet, but normally most of the factions that I side with anyways require me to clear out the Omertas, so figured I would just stop in and do it now. So, after they all died because none of them felt like really fighting me and they were all hiding in the back for some reason, I went off to talk to Mr. House who wanted me to go recover the platinum chip from Benny, so that's where I was off to. Heading into the tops, there wasn't a whole lot here to discuss, the chairmen don't have armor, they don't have helmets, so all of them went down in pretty much one shot, 
They did pack quite a punch though, for some reason most of them were carrying higher caliber pistols than I was used to instead of their normal 22 caliber weapons. I killed Vulpus on my way to deliver the platinum chip to Mr. House, and he was ecstatic and he probably thanked me by making me sit through his goddamn Securitron upgrade marathon again. I feel like I've watched this so many times, I need to find a mod that just lets me skip that. I stopped in to barter with Cliff Briscoe in Novak on my way to the fort, which I normally don't do, I never really stop into Novak. Harassed some golden geckos on the way there, which promptly went down in one shotgun shell. I also got bullied by some raiders. I'm pretty sure I had shotgun surgeon at this point, so none of the enemies were really too tough to me. I didn't take and stay back until later, and it didn't really do me any good anyways because that perk is kind of useless on the single shotgun. I made it to the fort where they promptly stole all of my shit because I'm not allowed to have it for some reason. Talked to Caesar, and I was off to do more of his bidding, which required me to head down into the bunker and start destroying generators. I wasn't going to do that, and I actually started just clearing out the robots down here because I was going to upgrade the Securitrons for Mr. House. It was about this point that I decided I wanted to side with Mr. House for this run, so I started clearing out all the Protectrons and turrets, upgraded the Securitron software, and headed back towards Mr. House. Except that's not what I did. I actually decided I was going to do things a little differently this time. So normally when I do Mr. House's questline, I just decide to follow along and do things as he asks me to. Well this time, I was going to head off straight to the boomers and get them out of the way before he even asked. I got assaulted by some of the kings on the way there because I forgot that they were near the gate, killed a wasteland vigilante, and went over to Boop George with a shotgun shell because that's how everyone should greet him on every single playthrough because he deserves it. Ran through the artillery that the boomers tried to launch at me and made it into the camp where I decided that I wasn't going to be friendly and I offed Pearl immediately, as well as one of the boomers and Raquel. For some reason, which I'm still trying to process, Raquel's combat armor didn't do a whole lot for her and she went down in one shot. I also went off to kill Jack and Loyal because they had to die for Mr. House's questline. Unlike Yes Man, you actually have to kill all of the boomers main named people. So, the Brotherhood didn't want to let me in at this point because I was going to do everything that Mr. House needed, so I decided to spam save quick save quick load to get in there early because you can just glitch through the door if you spam it fast enough and started clearing out the Brotherhood. Yeah, this didn't go as planned. Uh, the Brotherhood's actually really, really strong against the single shotgun, even though I'd had shotgun surgeon at this point, and I died in there for about an hour, so I decided I was just gonna, you know, blow up the bunker. So after killing the ranger, I went and gathered key cards that I would need, set the bunker up to explode, and ran my ass out of there. With that done, I went over and discovered El Dorado substation because I would need it here in just a couple minutes, went back to Mr. House, who I could turn in all of his quests subsequently to, and headed back to El Dorado substation, which I was just there a few minutes ago, and slaughtered all the sleeping NCR soldiers inside. With that upgraded and done, I went back to the strip, killed Emily Ortel for some reason, I'm not sure why I decided to shoot her in the head, and started the second battle of Hoover Dam. The NCR caused a little bit of issues here, but it was mostly the cons that caught me off guard because with Mr. House's questline, I always forget that we don't deal with the cons and they actually surprise you by jumping out of the building right there. The Centurions were actually a bit of an issue. They took a lot less damage than I was expecting, but the NCR Heavy Troopers, which I just used slugs against, went down very quickly and it was kind of depressing to see how fast they died. The Securitron was very helpful actually for once, he didn't blow off my limbs until later. So, I used slugs more inside the dam while I was turning on the power switch because I'm not used to actually using them with any of the shotguns. I don't normally use slugs, so it was kind of nice for a change of pace. Uh, not only am I using a shotgun I never use, I'm using ammo types that I never use. I started making my way through the guards at the Legates camp. The slugs were actually a godsend here because, again, all of the Legates troops are mostly melee because they're stupid and don't use guns, so the slugs made quick work of basically everybody. The Legate I did manage to knock down at the beginning of the fight, and I thought that meant things were going to go well. I did not ask him to fight me one on one, so I promptly got cyberbullied by him and the rest of the troops. With that out of the way, I decided to immediately try fighting him head to head again, and the Securitron killed him with a rocket barrage immediately. He stole my kill, so mad at the Securitron, I booped him with a shotgun shell and sent him over the edge. General Oliver arrived, and I just had all of the Securitrons kill off all the NCR while I ran away to hide around the corner because I was kind of over using this weapon at this point. I embraced my inner General Oliver and went over to talk to Mr. House for the last time to complete the run, and with that, I beat Fallout New Vegas with only a single shotgun. And got a really nice outro screen. I've never seen this before. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave suggestions in the comments below, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching.